You've been lied to about how thinking works. Most people think the smartest person is the one who knows the most, but that's wrong. The real skill, the one that separates sharp thinkers from everyone else, is knowing how to change your mind without feeling like an idiot. And if you don't learn this skill, you will keep holding on to bad beliefs for years without even realizing it. Think about the last time you were sure about something and turned out to be wrong. Remember how that felt, that sting, that embarrassment. That's the pain on running on bad mental software. You see, our brain is a computer. The gray matter is hardware and our thoughts are software. As with every computer, to work well, our brains need constant updates. I'm a professor of critical thinking and I teach people to spot when their mental software is out of date and how to upgrade it fast. Today, you're gonna learn a method that scientists, poker players, and world-class decision makers use every day to stay ahead of the truth. Buckle up. Whether you realize it or not, every belief you have is part of a belief system loop. There are three parts of this loop. You start with something you already believe. This is called a prior belief, or prior for short. Then you encounter new information, basically data. Finally, you merge the two into an updated belief, your posterior belief or just the posterior. Then that new belief becomes your new prior, the next starting point. And the loop starts again. This is, in a nutshell, the basics of what I like to call Bayesian critical thinking, a method rooted in an amazing statistical idea from the 18th century Presbyterian priest from England, Thomas Bates. When you first learn about it, you realize this is how you already think. But the trick is, if you're not steering this process, it runs on autopilot, and autopilot thinking is how bad ideas survive. Let's unpack to see how this process should actually work. Imagine you're watching a murder mystery. The detective hasn't even finished the opening monologue and you've already decided the butler did it. That is your prior. Then you acquire new data. A security camera shows the butler delivering groceries at the exact time of the murder. Your beliefs get an update. It was not the butler. Maybe it was the jealous ex. Then another twist. New data shows that at the time of the murder, the ex was on a flight to another city. Update again. Maybe it was the sweet old neighbor who just happened to be baking cookies that day. Every scene, you're forced to combine what you thought before with what you just learned. This is how a pro thinks, not glued to the first idea, but never swinging wildly without a good reason. But what is a good reason? This is where good thinking blurs the boundary between science and art. It's hard to recognize good reasons to change our minds. That is why most people either cling to their first guess no matter what, or they flip their belief with every new twist. In a mystery movie, that just makes you a bad audience member. In real life, it makes you a bad decision maker. Recognizing good reasons requires us to give our priors and the data the weight they deserve and combine them in ways that preserve their respective weights. Here's what that means. Think of your prior as one number and your data as another. Both are pulling on your belief. If your prior is strong, say 1000 consistent Yelp reviews for a restaurant, one disappointing meal shouldn't crash your rating from 4.5 stars to 2 you'd probably average them out, maybe landing at 4.2 or something. But if your prior is weak, say only three reviews, that same bad meal should pull your rating down a lot more. Back to the murder mystery. If your prior that the butler did it is based on strong evidence, you won't throw it out after one small clue. But if your suspicion is based only on just a weird vibe, and the new clue is solid, then that's when you drop the butler theory fast. This is the heart of Bayesian critical thinking, balancing the pull of what you believed with the pull of what you just learned in proportion to their strength. This matters because this isn't just about fictional butlers. It's about whether you trust the wrong person, make the wrong investment, or ignore the early signs of danger. If you don't weigh priors and data correctly, you will either get stuck in bad beliefs or be blown around by every new headline. The important lesson here is that your beliefs don't live alone. They're linked to one another and form a chain that makes up your entire belief system. Change one belief and others get affected too. In the mystery, believing the butler is innocent instantly raises the odds that the killer is someone else. 
In life, believing a job is stable affects how much you save. Believing someone's trustworthy changes what you tell them. Amateur thinkers just see dots, but pros see the entire web. Let's take another example. Imagine you wake up sick. Your prior, oh, it's just the allergies. Then you remember you were next to someone coughing on the train yesterday. You update, maybe you caught a virus, you run the test, but the test shows negative. So it's not the virus? You discount the virus hypothesis, but you never fully reject it because you know tests aren't perfect. It's still possible that after more data comes in, it turns out you did catch a bug from that dude on the subway. Bayesian critical thinking is all about weighing probabilities and their consequences, not chasing certainty. To be a thinking pro means being comfortable making decisions based on incomplete information, while remaining ready to change your beliefs when new and relevant information pours in. If you take nothing else from this lesson, at least learn this. Good thinking isn't about clinging to being right. It's about constantly moving towards less wrong. Start with your prior, add new data, update, repeat. Do that and your beliefs will get sharper every day and you'll be as close to truth as it's humanly possible. This is Think Why, your professor of critical thinking. This episode is a part of a series focused on how to be a better thinker in a world dominated by ordinary human stupidity and extraordinary artificial intelligence. Don't miss the next one. See you later.